Clark. Today we're at Southlands Heritage Farm in southwestern Vancouver. The Fraser River is just over there. And the Southlands area is unique because it's the only area of Vancouver that falls within the agricultural land reserve. So this area is protected for farmland within the province of BC. Now the Maynard family has been here since the 1960s and they've been kind enough to let us come film and even dig a pit on their farm. They have organic agriculture here, equestrian activities, and even some day camps and educational activities so kids can see agriculture in action. So what do you think of this landscape? Well, <clears throat> one of the things that you notice as we walk across uh, to our pit here, which we're going to talk about, is how level it is. So we have a very flat landscape and one which is naturally very poorly drained. So if we're going to manage this for uh, food production, then uh, water and how we deal with water is going to be an important factor to talk about. This is the pit that we've dug for you today. And as you can see, we found a whole bunch of water in the bottom. So I was wondering if you could tell me what the story is there. This particular uh, soil here is formed in Fraser River alluvium which is mainly silts and clays. Uh, it's pretty typical of lowland soils across the Fraser River Delta, ones that we would find in Richmond, Delta, and Surrey. The story of this particular so uh, soil is an interesting one and a bit, bit complicated, and it looks like we can see evidence of two soils here. The first is the surface that we're standing on here, and the, we have an A here and a B horizon with some modeling and so on, but down here we have a second darkened horizon which looks like a buried A. So, and, and beneath that, some modeling indicating uh, B horizon development below that. And so what likely happened was that this was the surface of the delta, maybe a thousand, two thousand years ago, whatever, and then the river changed and about 35 centimeters of sediment was deposited on top of that. Uh, the thing that's pretty common all the way up and down the profile is that uh, we don't see a lot of uh, stones, rocks. There's a little bit of sand. I can feel a little grittiness, but not, not that much. Um, and so we have uh, a silt loam texture, which is about as good as it gets in terms of holding water and holding nutrients. Um, yeah, so it, it's a good soil uh, as long as you can control that water table. It is uh, flooded seasonally, usually during the winter time, and then it drains in the summertime, and you get some oxidation causing the rusty iron oxides to appear. Here's a um, chunk of soil from depth, and you can see the different colors, the uh, modeling that occurs where you have aerated zones, kind of a rusty iron oxide color, and then the gray dull colors around there where it hasn't been aerated. And the reason that that's circular is because that's following a plant root channel. The um, marsh plants that grew in here, many of them had air-filled pores that conducted oxygen down into the soil and actually created an aerated zone down at depth. So these are interesting features that you get in these alluvial soils. What are some of the important management concerns for someone working with a delta soil like this one? Number one starts with water management. It's absolutely critical that you have control of the water table and um, Without that, the range of crops that you can grow here uh, productively is, is fairly small because you're limited to a fairly short window in the summertime when the, the soils dry out and where you have enough um, time to grow maybe a short season crop. But with good drainage, and that's pretty much typical of this site here, the range of crops expands quite broadly. You can grow almost anything here that we can grow in the region. Um, the um, one thing that is of concern here is soil structure. And you have to be careful not to till these soils or drive on them when they're wet because they compact. And that 
squeezes down the large air-filled pores. It makes it hard for rooting to happen. It makes it hard for oxygen to go into the soil and carbon dioxide to leave the soil. And one of the things that we would notice is that a crop like carrots that needs a nice, loose depth of soil will not do well in a compacted soil like this. And so uh, good drainage, uh, not over tilling and not working the soil when it's wet. These are key factors here. Uh, from a soil fertility perspective, they tend to be pretty fertile to begin with, but uh, through soil testing, we quite often find that they maybe need a bit more uh, nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium uh, elements like that. And it's also possible that the pH can be fairly low on some of these soils, and so they may need to be lined.